Hello, this is Jeremy, and in today's video, I'm going to show you how to use a TI-83 or 84 calculator to find z-scores when you're given areas or probabilities. Now this can be converted into a method for finding values when you have any normal distribution. And so what's important to know about the TI-83 or 84 calculator is that you have two main tools for normal distributions. You have the normal CDF. What this does is it takes values or z-scores and it gives you the percentage or the probability. But you also have the inverse normal. And what this does is take area and give you a z-score, or you could also look at it as taking a percentage or probability and give you a z-score, or even a value depending on what type of problem you're doing. And so when I say, like I do here in A, find the z-score which corresponds to a given area, the first thing I would recommend doing is drawing a picture to see which tool makes the most sense. And so since this is z that we're talking about, I know the mean is zero. Then I say, okay, the area is 0.8438 and it's to the left. Well, the entire area under this curve is one. So this is essentially saying about 84% of the area is to the left of the z-score. Since this is symmetric around zero, I know 50% is to the left of zero. So to have 80% plus to the left, you gotta be somewhere over here. So my z is somewhere here, I'm not quite sure where, and I'm told that this area to the left of it is 0 0.8438. Okay, well what inverse normal does is it takes an area and it only works with area to the left, takes an area to the left, it gives you the z-score. So in this case, this would be inverse norm of 0 0.8438, nothing else. And so when I do this, I'll get z. And on the calculator, this is under the same menu as normal CDF. In other words, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna press the second in VIRS button and that'll get me into the distributions menu and it's right at the top inverse normal. So once I click that I can just type 0.8438 and press enter and as you can see I get a z-score of 1.01. .01. You could actually check this answer. If you wanted to check this answer what you would do is you would see okay if I do normal CDF and I look to the left of this z-score so if I go minus E99 out to 1.01 .01, I should get approximately 0 0.84. Now this was rounded a bit, so this is how you can actually check your work. So it's saying, if this is 1.01, .01, then this has to be the area to the left. Okay, well what about area to the right? I just told you that all this deals with is area to the left. Well, let's draw the picture first. And we say, okay, we're dealing with Z, so it's normal with a mean of zero. Area to the right's 43%. Well, the area to the right of zero is 50, so we gotta be a little further over than that. So a little smaller than 50%. So this right here would be 0 0.4332. Okay, well the problem is inverse normal wants the area to the left, but the total area under the curve is one. So what I could actually do to find this area over here is take one minus 0 0.4332. Now I could either directly calculate that where inverse normal is pretty forgiven. So I could do inverse norm of one minus 0.4332, go through the menu on the calculator, that'll give me Z. And in this case, I get Z equals 0.17. So very small Z score, that means this is really close to zero. So this is even closer than my picture probably showed. Okay, now what about finding the middle, like here I say, what two z-scores, it'd have to be two, separates the middle 95% of the area from the area in the tail. So let me draw a picture of this one. Say, okay, the middle 95%, so we're talking about z, so that means zero. So that'd be almost everything, right? So we're gonna have two z's, so I'm gonna call this z1, I'm gonna call this z2, and we have 95% of the area in here. So the question is, how do I, for example, find Z1, the first Z? Well, we only want area to the left, correct? So I know it's inverse normal because I'm given a percentage and I'm trying to find a Z, but what do I put in here? Well, what's the area to the left of this? Well, 95% of the area is here in the middle, so 5% of the area is left out, but that 5% is here and here. So what's over here? Half of the 5%, so 0.05 over two which is 0 
So if I do inverse norm of 0.025, I'll get Z1. What about Z2? What's the area to the left of Z2? Well, it'd be the 95%, I'm just looking to the left, and then this half of a 5%. So in other words, Z2, the area to the left of that, is 0 0.975. Now when you go through on the calculator and do these, which I'm not going to go through again, same menu as before, you get minus 1.96 and you get 1.96. Okay, so the two z-scores would be these two values. Now why are they the same except for signs? Only because we're symmetric around zero. So the middle 95% it's symmetric around zero. In applied problems this might be symmetric around a mean of five or six and it's not going to be just the opposite numbers like this. So you have to be careful. This only works with z. Now I could essentially ask you the same types of questions but in a different format, but it looks so different that I want to talk about it for a minute. So I have two examples here that look like completely different questions, right? It says find Z naught, so that's Z naught, such that Z is less than Z naught, has a probability of 0.35, and then another question, Z greater than Z naught, has a probability of 0.15. Probability, area, and percentages are all the same thing. So when I see probability z is less than z naught, I'm thinking this. You gave me the answer to the probability question. Normally we're finding something like this, right? I say what's probability z is less than 2? And you just find it. But now I've, I don't have a number there anymore. Well, you gave me the answer. So I know we're talking about z, so that means 0, and it's a normal distribution. And you're telling me that the probability z is smaller than this number is only 35%. Z less than something is the same as area to the left. So this has 35% of the area to the left. So here's Z naught, and then I know this area right here is 0.35. Now why isn't this over here? Because remember, this is the 50% mark. This is less than 50% to the left, so I gotta move over a little bit. Now that I have the picture, I can see this would be inverse norm of 0.35, which you can check on your calculator z naught in this case would be minus 0 0.39. So in other words, I could rewrite this question into a statement and I could say the probability that z is less than minus 0 0.39 is equal to 0 0.35. That's just what we figured out. Similarly with this question, what's probably z is larger than z naught? Well, we're told the answer is 15%. So what I'm essentially being told is that if you were to draw this picture, the 15% of the area is to the right because they're greater than of Z naught. But what have you just learned? You know, okay, I use inverse normal to find Z, but this is area to the right, we gotta use area to the left. So the answer here is gonna be inverse normal of not 0 0.15, but 0 0.85. And when you find, do this, you get Z naught which is equal to 1.03. So again, these questions I went through a little more quickly, but that's because they're identical to what we did before. They're just stated in a different way. You should be comfortable with both types of questions. And again, when you do this with applied problems, the only thing that changes is that you have to add in a mean and a standard deviation. Because if I ask you probability x is less than some value of x naught equals 15%, and I want you to find x naught, well, you gotta know, okay, is this normal? Well, it is. Then you gotta know what's the mean and standard deviation. So later, when you do applied problems, it'll be inverse normal of the area to the left, but then your mean and then your standard deviation as well. When you don't put in a mean and standard deviation, it assumes you're dealing with z. So remember, if you're dealing with anything other than z to add that in. Otherwise, pay attention if you're given a probability area or percentage and you're trying to find a value, that's when you use inverse normal.